Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing so well. I thought it would be so much fun to do a little chit chat, get ready with me, quarantine edition. This is by no means what I look like on an average quarantine day, but you know those days when you have things going on, you just wanna put yourself together a little bit more? This is what I would do for it. So I hope we can get ready together. So go get your makeup, get your snacks, get situated, and we'll just jump right in. So I've already gone ahead and prepped my skin. I used the Good Molecules Ultra Hydrating Oil and then the Claire's Fundamental Ampule Mist on top. And both those products are going to act as my primer. Now I'm gonna go in with my foundation. I'm using the Dior Forever Skin Glow in the color 2WO. And I'm just gonna apply two really small drops on either side of my face and that's all the coverage that I want to use. Now for concealer, I'm gonna go in with the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer in the color Vanilla, which is normally really light. For me, it would be like my brightening shade, but because I took a little bit of my foundation under my eyes, that kind of acted like my neutral concealer, and then this one won't be so stark. I'm gonna leave it there to warm up with my skin, and in the meantime, I'm gonna go in with the Matchsticks from Fenty in the color Truffle, just to add a little warmth back into my skin. So how are you guys? How did this quarantine period go for you? Where in the world are you and what were your shutdowns like? Um, are you looking forward to things opening back up or are you timid? I'm looking forward to things opening back up because I just don't think that it's good for your mental health and the economy um, to go so long without work, without socialization and while there are definitely gonna be risks associated with being around people again, I think you can still be careful when you do that and try and minimize um, the exposure that you're having, but at least you're not you know, completely locked down and unable to work, unable to make money, which a lot of people aren't, and they're depending on government funds, and you know, all of that stuff is gonna to need to be paid back anyway, so I just feel like there's so many stresses and people really need just a little taste of normality and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we're able to do it in a way that doesn't skyrocket the cases once again. Were any of you directly affected by COVID as far as your health or your loved one's health? What was that experience like? I would love to hear from you and I really hope that you're doing okay now. So I also wanted to do this video um, to allow you guys to get to know me a little bit more because I'm getting to know so many of you through my messages and I thought it'd be nice to open up about myself also. So I'm just gonna go through and answer some of the questions that you had left for me on um, the question story that I had posted. And the first one asks, what keeps you motivated or who keeps you motivated? And I have two answers for this. Um, number one, who keeps me motivated? My parents and my sister, absolutely. Um, my sister is 16 years younger than me, so I just feel like I have a responsibility towards her to show her everything, you know? I show her what hard work is, show her discipline in a way that's really fun for her too and isn't coming across in too much of a parenting way um, because I just feel like she will absorb that and then act the same way as she grows up. And my parents, they have been working nonstop their entire lives. My mom actually got married at 18 and has been working ever since then. She moved from Pakistan. She had just done grade 10. Then she moved to Canada and has been working ever since then. And they built such a comfortable life for themselves and for us that I really am hellbent on making sure that I take my life for myself and also my kids a step up because... Otherwise, if I just created a life that was the same as what they gave me or not as comfortable as what they gave me, then that would be a disservice to their efforts. So I really am um, working hard to make sure I do that so they feel like their efforts were well-placed and that they taught me something and taught me how to be you know, self-sustaining and set me up as far as my education and my habits and my practices and all that kind of stuff. And then as far as myself, um, I spent a long, long time 
kind of like quieted in society because you know growing up people want you to talk a certain way behave a certain way do certain things um and going too far out of that makes everyone so uncomfortable but at the end of the day you're uncomfortable and recently i got to the point in my life where i was so tired of kind of coasting by life being quiet and not totally living out my full personality my full dreams my passions not being clear about what i wanted out of life and just allowing um the fulfillment of other people's expectations to be my only drive and just putting my own on the back burner it just wasn't worth it to me anymore and i realized that short-term resistance from other people especially the community and you know things like Loki, Genge, or what will people say um was really debilitating to me and i would rather deal with a short-term resistance on that front than a long-term regret that i have to sleep with for the rest of my life i'm just going to go in with the same brush that i applied my foundation with now and just blend in these two colors and my next question is what are your hobbies outside of work and that is such a hard question to answer do you guys ever feel like when you're asked that you like draw a blank and you have no idea what to say but I have so many hobbies. I think my main ones these days are cooking and dancing. So I've been dancing since I was around six or seven. I started off in Paratnatyam actually and loved that, but it was so regimented. And then I turned to contemporary Bollywood, Pangra, and then jazz, ballet, um, contemporary, modern, hip hop, all that kind of stuff and I loved that I practically danced every single day of my life until I was about 17 and graduated high school and then when I went to Ireland for med school there was this group that performed for international night where all the countries would put on their performances and Pakistan India Bangladesh and Sri Lanka would put on one as well and so I was always a lead choreographer for them and then Oh my god once i started i had never been a choreographer i just been a dancer but once i started choreographing um it was like love at first sight i loved organizing people um i loved just like bringing a vision to life i think that was definitely one of the biggest highlights of um ireland and then cooking wise i actually also only learned to cook when i went to ireland my dad had never really allowed me to spend much time in the kitchen he would adamantly like get me out of the kitchen whenever I was there because I think he just thought I should be doing other things like studying and that was very nice of him but what happened was then I went to Ireland and I had no idea how to cook I had no idea how to do anything and I struggled and my roommates bless them were already so knowledgeable in everything like how to take care of themselves and i absolutely was not so they taught me everything that i knew at that point and i remember for a long time because i didn't know how to cook anything all i would have was like boiled pasta with sauce from the jar was like gourmet for me most of the time i would just have um like rice and ketchup yeah it was that bad and it's so funny because now i'm like I love cooking. I create like elaborate meals. So to go from there to this is so many steps above. I also really love swimming. I really love clay pigeon shooting. I love traveling. So I'm looking forward to the warmer weather so I can get back outside, do some hikes, explore the province, stuff like that. I also got a lot of questions on my medical school journey, but that is going to have to be its own video because I have too much to say about it. Um, I had a lot of ups and downs, mainly downs in medical school. And so I just feel like my story and my experiences could really help someone. Um, and I do want to share them. It's actually to a point where I actually have nightmares about medical school, um, if I'm being completely honest. I think I actually do have some... I don't want to say PTSD, but it feels like PTSD from medical school. And to this day, I still have dreams. Like I, I actually just had one a night ago that I didn't graduate medical school while everyone else did. And 
it's awful. Like I can't tell you how often I have these dreams and it, it, it really takes a toll on you. So I'm going to go in to depth with everything that I experienced there and how you can make your experience hopefully better than mine. The next question I was asked was, what are your thoughts on arranged marriage? And I'm so happy that someone asked this because I have things to say. So first of all, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody. If it works for you, it works for you. And whatever your thoughts are on the matter, all the power to you. But my thoughts are that arranged marriages are a great way to meet people and it's nice to go into that meeting knowing like what everyone is wanting out of the situation. There's no games for the most part, but that is only the case if you are really honest about what you want out of a partner and what your needs are. And that person is just as honest. Um, and it also only works if both of you are willing to compromise and are looking for someone who really is compatible with them rather than looking to just get married for the sake of getting married. I think a lot of people go into rishte and um, arranged marriage situations with no idea of, first of all, who they are and then no idea of what they need in a partner to really thrive and they end up agreeing to something simply for the sake of just taking off that milestone in their life. And I don't think that that's okay because it always pops up later in life. And I think that was also the case for probably most of our elders. And they made it work, but we no longer live in this world and society where people make it work. People are going out and having their needs fulfilled elsewhere, God forbid, and, um, you know, not bothering to compromise with one another. They don't believe in staying with one person forever. Divorce rates are soaring. And I don't want that to happen to anyone. So if you are not honest with yourself and also your parents about who you are, what you want out of a partner, what your needs are, what you like in someone, what you don't like in someone, and if you don't meet enough people to actually know those things too, because you can't just, like what you think you want and need is not actually what you think and want and need, I promise you. Um, only experiences can teach you that. And if you're not honest about that, then your parents can't introduce you to the right people or people that are truly compatible. And the people that are going to be brought to you are going to be people that are compatible with your parents, not you. And with your parents' expectations of what they think will suit you or the person that they think you are. Um, and the worst is when the only criteria for someone to be brought to you or be suggested towards you is the fact that they are of a certain career or their parents are of a certain career or their grandparents were of a certain career, as if that matters at all. None of those things. And also like your complexion, your height, None of those things make the compatibility of a person, make the character of a person. None of those things are going to, in the long term, be something that gives you a partner that helps you thrive, unless you're very lucky. I just think if I have to spend my life with someone, my days, my nights, my money, my bills, create children, share the raising and upbringing of those children, share my family, my dreams, my passions, my likes, my dislikes, every meal, every trip. If I have to share all of that with someone and I'm being put in a position to share it with a stranger, that is too big of a gamble to take. And I think our parents have worked way too hard um, to give us lives in this generation where we have advantages that they never had. And I think a lot of our elders were put in relationships just for the sake of, you know, they were like promised to each other at birth or their parents liked each other. And so the parent, uh, the kids were wed and no one really had that much of a say. Like people say you have a say, but you don't. 
and for the most part, obviously, our parents made it work, but did they really find partners? Like, do you ever think about the fact that, did our parents really find partners that gave them the best partnership that they could have had and allowed them to create the best life that they could have created? Or did they just get a partner for the sake of having a partner because the age was right or the time was right or um, whatever the case may be? So for me, I would say, be so honest and blunt to a fault about what you want out of somebody, what you like and don't like out of someone, because otherwise it's kind of like blind dating, except instead of dating and having the option, like the free option to say yes or no or see that person again, you're kind of locked into entertaining them and entertaining marriage with them. And then at the end of the day, you end up wasting each other's time. That's the most important thing. Families cannot be wasting each other's time just for the sake of, um, you know, we heard this family was nice. Like, really? No. Like, and especially if you're not going to let your kids talk or get to know each other privately and independently, obviously, all while staying respectful to traditions and boundaries, then really you're just ensuring that the parents get along. And that is honestly one of the lesser important things in the grand scheme of things because you're not marrying you are marrying the family but you're not living every day with the family you're living every day with this individual and a lot of people go in and find out people's true colors in a marriage i have seen it happen people lie and manipulate who they are and aren't honest about who they are behind closed doors and even in front of families will be very you know like improper a certain way but behind closed doors they're completely other creatures and that is not okay um you're basically setting someone's life up for disaster and taking someone's family along for that ride too so don't do that but again it does work for some people like i said if you're honest about what you're looking for who you want in a partner um and you're very like open and communicative about what you're looking for in a marriage from the get-go, then fine, it could work for you. And I really hope that it does. And you're so lucky if it does, because that's just such a nice, you know, like no games involved way of settling down if that's what you are wanting to do. But otherwise, um, I think it's so dangerous and such a big gamble. The next question I was asked was, how do you deal with hate on social media and otherwise? Um, I actually haven't gotten that much hate to my face on social media. I think there were two situations where I actually was hearing something to my face. One time someone was just telling me on my YouTube video that another girl on YouTube was prettier. And I think that's such an unnecessary thing to say. Like, why would you go out of your way to say that? And um, Another time I was told that I wasn't a real doctor and I should stop saying I'm a doctor. And that is fine too. You can take issue with whatever you want. I think I'm very honest about what I do and who I am, what my accolades are and what my accolades aren't. So I just tried to explain to that person um, calmly what the truth of the matter was and hopefully they went about their life not being so bothered by me. And as far as behind my back, you know what, at the end of the day, you cannot control how someone paints you in their narrative. You just cannot. And oftentimes it's quite unjust how you get painted. I've experienced that so much, but you really can't control it. And so at the end of the day, the longer you spend really just like dwelling on the fact that it's so unjust, the longer you're just hurting yourself. And one of my friends said to me, that person who is doing you wrong is living rent free in your mind. And that is not okay. I don't have time to give to people who aren't uplifting me or thoughts that aren't uplifting me. So why would I sit around bogged down by, you know, thoughts and opinions that other people have or what they're saying about me? I think the part that hurts the most when you experience it is that your biggest hater will not be a stranger. But when you experience something like that, you really have to reframe your thoughts. 
think about how much inner turmoil must be going through someone's mind for them to put that much negativity out into the world about you, especially if you haven't instigated it. People with peace of mind and people that are happy and secure in their own lives don't go around hating on other people. They have better things to do. If they really need to show negativity or try and defame you or do things with the purpose of hurting you, they're really too consumed with your life to have peace in theirs. Does that make sense? It's hard, but you really have to just pray for them and wish them healing from the demons that they're facing. At the end of the day, people will paint you in a light that is so complimentary and so wonderful as long as it suits them and as long as they want to be on that side of you and want to see that good in you and um, need you to be fulfilling that role in their lives. But the moment that it doesn't serve them anymore, the moment that they can't cope with, whether it's insecurity or whatever other issues they have, they will paint you as the villain in their story. They will paint you in a negative light. They will say things to try and poke holes in your life, your happiness. And that is just a reflection of what's going on inside of them. It has nothing to do with you and you will never be able to change it. So at the end of the day, as long as you maintain your inner peace, don't retaliate, don't stoop to their level. I don't even address it or deal with it anymore because I don't have the time to. I, I don't want to say I'm above it, but I am above um, petty drama. Uh, so I just don't even address the hate. I don't, I, I think about the hate, trust me. <laughs> but it just makes me feel empathy for that person and what they're going through. And if, you know, I need to be painted in a negative light for them to feel better and get through their day, then so be it, you do that because I am over here having a great day. Okay, I'm going to zoom through the rest of my makeup because I think talking takes me too long. And I also apologize if I'm coming across to the camera as low energy, I just get really wrapped up in what I'm doing and forget that there's a camera that I need to be like <laughs> energized for. So I'm sorry if that comes across as really mellow. I'm not mellow at all. I'm just, um, instead of contouring, I'm kind of reverse contouring, I'm setting in these areas with um, the banana powder from Makeup Revolution, just to kind of sharpen and chisel out my cheekbones. I'm gonna let this goatee looking face set for a little bit while I go in and I set my um, blush. I'm just using a plum color because, okay, well that really stuck to, this is why you set your face. My cheeks were wet because of the uh, cream blush and so, my powder blush is clinging to dry spots now and I'm gonna have to blend that out carefully. But I really like using a more plummy color blush because it makes you look naturally flushed or it makes my skin tone look naturally flushed. And I like going on the bridge of my nose too because it kind of ties everything together and also right here. So as sharp and dark as that looks, don't worry, you're going to blend it all out and blush is the first thing to fade in the day anyway, so I kind of like to pack it on so that I stay flushed looking all day long. Once you've blended out that setting powder, I just go in with a big uh, brush. This is from Base Blue Cosmetics. And I just blend everything together so it's really seamless. And then you can go in with your blush again and just fix that and just go back and forth a couple times so you're happy with the finish. My video stopped recording at some point and it didn't capture my putting on mascara and my highlights. I'm so sorry, I don't have that footage for you, but I used the Dose of Colors Chasing the Sun highlight from Desi X Katie. It's so nice. It just makes your skin glisten. It's, it's beautiful. And then for lashes, I used L'Oreal Telescopic. So now I'm going to go in with lips and then we're done. So I'm just going to wipe the lip balm I have on right now and exfoliate my lips at the same time. Okay, and then I'm going to use Morphe's Sweet Tea Lip Liner.
If you can hear a piano in the background, that's my sister doing piano class next door. So it's just a nice brown lip liner. And then I'm going in with Clinique's, I think it's called an almost lipstick in the color Black Honey. It is so beautiful and it wears really well and leaves a tint on your lips once it uh, fades away. So it's really beautiful and natural, I think. But if you want to take it a step further, even you can go in with a more dry lip pencil because sweet tea is really emollient and it will probably not last you all day. But this one, Cork from MAC will. So then I outline the very outside with that um, and it just kind of makes my lips last longer. That's it, and it works with the blush so well, I think. And you're done. That is my quick, although it probably wasn't quick because I was talking for so long, um, quarantine makeup look. Please let me know what you thought of the look and if you give it a try for yourself. I hope that you got ready with me. And um, yeah, let me know if you would like to see more videos like this, talk through wise, I mean. It's actually very challenging to keep talking while you're doing something like I already explained, but I enjoyed it. So if you guys liked it, I'll do more of this format rather than the sped up videos or the voiceovers. I hope whatever your day holds, it's a beautiful one. And I hope you got to know me and my personality a little bit better. I know I'm still a little reserved and I didn't answer that many questions, but I'm getting more and more comfortable with every video. So I will get better, I promise. Okay, that's all from me and I will talk to you soon. Bye.